Thanks very much. So you're seeing my screen, right? Correct. Okay. So uh, thanks for the invitation. My name is Paula Lima. I come from the Center for Robotics and Autonomous Systems at Inesc Tech. And today I will talk about marine pollution monitoring using unmanned vehicles. As we all know, marine pollution is a growing problem in today's world. Our ocean is being flooded with two main types of pollution, chemicals and trash. My presentation will focus on oil spills and marine litter. We developed an unmanned in situ oil spill combat system based on bioremediation comprising unmanned vehicles equipped with containers and release systems for lyophilized bacteria consortia and nutrients and an application for mission control and data acquisition and processing. Um, this was a result of two finished uh, projects, Pilas and Horsman. Our motivations were to develop a native microbial consortia with high potential for petroleum biodegradation, to integrate first line responses to oil spill incidents with a team of unmanned autonomous vehicles and to increase overall efficiency of the oil spill combat missions. For that, our partner CIMAR created a native microbial consortia library of potential oil uh, degraders. They started by collecting water samples from two um, 17 sampling sites at the north of Portugal and Galicia. Afterwards, they isolated and identified potential oil degraders obtaining 400 bacterial strains. At Inesc Tech, we advanced on two fronts, on the development of specific containers and the release systems, and on the development of multi-robot cooperation algorithms. We used our autonomous surface vehicle, Quash, and our unmanned vehicles, Stork and Griffwax. The UAV release system was composed by a payload attached to the vehicle that contained a tank and a release system to spread lyophilized native microbial consortia dust over the oil spill. The ACV release system was composed of a water pump responsible for the suction of water and creation of a powerful flow and a micro pump responsible for the injection of a bacteria concentrate into the same flow. Attached to the sprinklers, uh, there was a motor responsible for the orientation of the flow of mixed water to the oil spill. The ROV release system was composed by a water tank containing the mixture of water and lyophilized powder and a pump with a flow meter responsible for the release. A customized multi-robot processing pipeline enabled the mission planning and control and also the acquisition and processing of environment data providing valuable results of oil spill conduct, uh, combat. We did seven, uh, five field tests in total and uh, obviously due to the environmental constraints associated with an oil spill, a simulation environment was developed in order to provide the vehicles a virtual oil spill. This meant that during each mission, a virtual oil spill was infrared to all vehicles while each one of them is performing the oil spill combat. Here we can see the results of uh, three of these field tests and uh, the waypoints are in green, the real trajectory in yellow, and the red line represents the oil spill, the simulated oil spill. Both projects were a huge success. We published seven papers, won a prize uh, of innovation, and uh, had a lot of media coverage. Uh, from these two projects um, came two more uh, project ideas. One of them is already uh, financed by RAM and Bioports, we're still uh, waiting from the reply. To tackle um, marine litter, we have as a plastics, it's another project with Oceanus and Air Center, and it's funded by ESA and had the duration of nine months. The goal of this project was to study and develop low TRL technology for a future spectrometer capable of detecting and classifying marine litter from space. We started by collecting marine litter from Pib Bay at Azores, that is a, a hotspot for micro and macroplastic, 
due to the currents coming from Africa um, and um, the America. And um, we used uh, the plastic collector to build the targets for the data set campaigns. The collected marine litter was characterized at the lab using multiple sensors in order to create a database to, uh, to be able to train the spectra for future classification. For that, we used FTIR, LIBS, Haman, X ray, and hypospectral cameras. Uh, here are the two cameras uh, that we are going to use further on. The orange camera collected visible spectrum and the black camera, the infrared spectrum. We did some data set campaigns using an AUV and a manned airplane. Both were equipped with the two synchronized hypospectral cameras I showed before. And uh, they were aiming the three targets that were built. Here are the raw results obtained from the manned airplane. Uh, the combined bands from the hyperspectral camera allowed a visible image to the push boom technique. Um, and here are the, um, the compared results that we obtained uh, from the lab and from the flights. And as we can see, they were consistent between them. Here are the raw data collected from the AUV, the same push boom technique, and the pixel coverage is better and there is a lower end mixing of other uh, non-plastic sources. Here we can see the same consistency between data collected. In conclusion, we can say that both projects would benefit a lot from comparison with Prisma and Sentinel data analysis from machine learning methods and from novel data set campaigns combi combining satellite and hyperspectral data. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening.